I'm Jazz Bianchi, and we're at Session 73 with Brenda Ramos, dancer, choreographer, Copa dancer. I've been waiting for this interview forever. Thank you. You're very welcome. I've, I've been avoiding it forever. <laughs> so I want to hear about how long you've been teaching. Let's see. I've been teaching for about a solid five years now. Uh, mainly, my, my home is Dance On Two. And what was your first introduction to salsa? Introduction was my family, of course. I'm Puerto Rican, born and raised in Puerto Rico, New York Rican, in Jersey, Hoboken, and Christmas parties were always involving salsa dancing. And um, I danced a little hip hop, a little street jazz, um, jazz ballet. And then at some point I got really tired of that and I thought, you know what? I want to get back to my roots. I want, I want to dance like that 90 year old couple that you see in the family functions that is like all full of soul and funk. And that's what really was my, was my inspiration and my first um, experience with salsa. So you have other dance experience as well, correct? I do. I do. I've been dancing all my life. I actually started with Latin Hustle. Um, oh, cute. Yeah, yeah. Latin Hustle was my introduction to partner dancing. And then I did some hip hop and street jazz. And when I was in my 20s, I um, started dancing or taking lessons in jazz and ballet. And you were a Cobra dancer too, correct? Yes, yes. I was one of the new original Copa Dancers. Yeah, I auditioned for the Copa Dancers when they first opened up back in 2002 and um, stayed with them until they closed. Yeah, I remember watching you on the stage like as a neophyte when I could barely do my basic, thinking, oh, wow, she's so cool. So it's so awesome to be interviewing you now and having this moment with you. So you had done something earlier in the year that I'm like totally excited about, and I, I have to like kind of out you on this, and it's the Salsa Burlesque. <laughs> So hot, like so hot. So tell us a little bit about that and when you think you might launch that again. Salsa burlesque is basically burlesque dancing to salsa music. Um, essentially what it is is really getting a feel for your individual sexiness and allowing it to come through your basic salsa steps. Incorporating the music, of course. Um, I use props. I use boas and chairs and sometimes canes and um, anything that you would kind of want to use in, in a burlesque class, basically. That's really hot because, I mean, salsa is a very sexy, sensual dance, and loving your body is part of that experience. I think that um, the Latino culture tends to feel that women should be a little bit more soft-spoken than the men. And um, I would like, my goal is to take women out of that. And I would like to take women into the philosophy of thought that it's okay to be in touch with your sexuality. It's okay to be sexy as long as you're elegant and you're feeling the music, you know? Yes, you can be sexy, but you must be a lady too. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your, um, your ideology. We were talking before the interview about holistic salsa, and it's brilliant. Mind, body, spirit. Um, I really am an advocate for holistic living in general. Um, I feel that salsa is wonderful because it's it's about connection for me personally. It's not about it's not just about styling. It's not just about knowing a million turn patterns or a million steps. It's about connection. And I think that I'm getting a little esoteric here and metaphysical, but I think that our world is is shifting in in, the, in that direction, where it's about setting up community and setting up connection. And I think that salsa is a good way to play, a uh, way to start, a good place to start. So what are your plans going forward? What do you see yourself doing a year from now? A year from now? I'll be taking over the world. <laughs> and actually, a year from now, I will still be in Manhattan. Um, I probably will be traveling a little bit to Puerto Rico. My family is from Puerto Rico, Rincón. Uh, what else? I, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of a 15-year-old boy. 
I intend on teaching him salsa as well. And I think that I'll be teaching a lot more because teaching really fulfills something, fulfills a void in my life, passing on my philosophy. And I really like that. Okay, you said, well, next year, a year, I'll still be here. Do you have plans on moving away, Miss Brenda? Not moving, but being maybe bi coastal. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. You keep us informed. <laughs> You're teaching um, a children's class now, too, right? I am. I am. I started working with children. Saturdays at 1 p.m., Chelsea Studios, Dance on 2. Um, I'm really enjoying that because I've been told, and I know this for a fact, I have a jovial spirit. So I, I use things like snapping, clapping, and stomping to keep timing. I also use things that they're already familiar with, like the hokey pokey, you put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, and it really helps them anchor um, salsa to what they already know. And it maintains, it stays with them. How have you seen salsa change from when you started dancing till now? It's gotten a little competitive. It's gotten a little, a little elitist. When I started, um, back in 1996, I would go to Side Street and it was a slower paced music and it was more about feeling the music and really hearing the music and not as many turn patterns and not as many spins. It's, um, it's a good evolutionary process, but I, I, miss, I miss the old school stuff. So what do you attribute, this, where did the spins come in? Like what happened? What happened in salsa that spins and fast and is the way down? I can't exactly say what happened. I think that it may have been just a natural process of, okay, I can do one spin, I can do two, I can do three, and so on and so forth. And that's okay. I just like to see it come back maybe a little bit to the feeling of it. Sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Sure. Good night.